Hi there, Evan here with Crypto and Markets for Friday, April 13th, 2018. Just wanted to go over here a couple of quick oil headlines here before the weekend. I saw this article on CNBC today. It really just irked me to no end. Oil prices again vulnerable to super spikes as geopolitics heat up and oil glut fades. First thing, if you learn anything off this video today, it's this. Whenever you hear super cycle or super spike or anything super in the business media, it always means we've hit tulip mania and we're very, very close to the top. Okay, that's my first thing. And as I go through the article here, I see what the analysts are saying here and I'm at a loss for words still. This is the first quote. The supply glut is gone, there was a security cushion, and now that's gone, said Daniel Jurgen, vice chairman of IHS Market. A lot of things are happening at the same time. Now firstly, the supply cushion being gone, that's wrong, I'll go over that in a second. And then there was a security cushion, now that's gone, so uh, now the oil analyst is now mongering for war. Great! Here's another one. As the inventory overhang drains, we're vulnerable to super spike again, said John Kilduff, energy analyst with Again Capital. That would only be if there were losses of significant size in any major oil-producing countries, particularly in the Middle East. Again, let's uh, bang the drums for more war here. More war, triple-digit oil, supp supply constraints will stay on forever. Oil is going to $100 a barrel. Halima Croft, the head of global commodity strategy at RBC, said it is realistic to start thinking about Brent nearing the $80 a barrel mark. To move beyond that, we'd have to see Venezuela really drop fast. I already factored that into my estimates. More on that in a minute. Iran would have real problems. Well, won't comment there. <laughs> And Yemen would have to visibly look a lot worse. Well, if you look at the humanitarian crisis there, I mean, things are absolutely terrible in that country, and I can't imagine it getting much, much worse than it already has. Iran, of course, everyone's scared about the U.S. pulling out of the Iran deal. It doesn't mean anything. They have ways to bypass the sanctions. So next up, to prove this all wrong, I'm going to go ahead and do some basic math here. By the way, when I do this math, big shout out to Anas Alhaji and Shy Girl on Twitter. I'll leave both the Twitter handles down below. Great sources for energy information. And remember, these are uh, the non-OPEC productions of February number. Demand is a February number. Venezuela is a February number also. And Brazil is the second half of the year. Okay? So assuming worst case scenario, we're going to assume everything in February is going to stay into the second half of the year. Again, I think the Venezuela numbers and the demand numbers are a bit high. Non-OPEC is probably a bit low. Again, we'll stay with it. Worst case scenario... You're looking at plus 100,000 barrels a day, assuming everything goes right. Non-OPEC plus 1.8 million barrels a day. Venezuela minus 500,000 barrels a day. Again, I think that's a bit high. It's probably going to be minus three to 400,000 barrels a day. Demand, 1.5 million barrels a day. I think that's really high. As you see... Um, the economy continue to falter worldwide. You're going to see that demand number for oil and other commodities go down as well. And Brazil. I've mentioned Brazil in previous videos. I said they were coming back online in 2019. But because of the oil price being up where it is, it looks like they're actually coming online second half of this year. So again, thanks to Anas Alhaji and Shy Girl for the numbers. There you go, guys. Assuming worst case scenario in the second half, 
we go right back into the same glut situation we had before. And if you want more Tulip Mania, look at this uh, spec positioning. Money managers increased bullish Brent crude oil bets by 20,519 net long positions to record 632,454 contracts. And remember, each contract is 1,000 barrels of oil. Long only positions rose 22,340. Short, oil pos short only positions climbed 1,821. So long short ratio, you're at 20 and a half to one. Telling me the whole street is nerdy bullish? You fooling the wrong guy. And here we go. New York Mercantile Exchange features only on April 10th. Keep in mind the, the Syria news hit April 11th. There you go. 450,000 longs, 34,000 short. And again, that's before the Syria news when a lot of people piled in after. We know that. And you're still there at 16.5 to 1. Lastly, to conclude, I mentioned in my video yesterday I like the U.S. dollar. Speculators net shorts U.S. dollar bets at largest since 2011. There you go. I'd like to trade even more. So to close, there's the headline. You know we're in tulip mania when you see headlines like this. Like this video. Leave a comment down below. Subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at CryptoMarkets2. You'll have a good weekend, everybody.